Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with another tutorial for ADSR and SoundTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel and you want to stay up to date with all of our tutorials, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. So that was a quick demo of the super saw sound we'll be making today in sound. Uh, the title of this tutorial is uh, basically about an epic saw. It's a very, very huge saw patch that's great for drops and things like that. So I do have an instance of Valhalla Vintage Verb on the uh, channel strip just to add a little bit more of a lush reverb to it. So that reverb just really helps kind of uh, thicken things up a little bit. So let's go on to uh, jumping in and making this patch. So I'll mute this preset and I have a new instance pre pulled up in silent. And I will keep that reverb on here as we go. So yours might sound a little bit dry. So maybe as you're starting, throw on your favorite reverb plugin on your channel strip in your DAW. So first thing I'm going to do in Silent is I'm going to change the voicing because I would like to play like to be able to play chords with this. I'm going to go up to uh, 12. Doesn't need to be about, doesn't need to be much higher than that. And in oscillator A1, I'm going to down tune. I'm going to detune this down the, a, a whole octave. So basically, when you're when I'm making these kind of big saw sounds, I want a good amount of low end. So I'm going to detune uh, the the second oscillator in part A down an octave as well. And then what I'll do in part B to really thicken things up is I'll pitch an oscillator or maybe two oscillators depending on what I'm using up so you get that spread in the sound. You have the lows and the highs fully represented. So in oscillator A1, the way the sound wave that we will be, um, the waveform we'll be using is this, just keep it on the saw wave and crank the voices up to six. And on the waveform for uh, oscillator A2, I'm going to select the triangle saw waveform. Looks like that, kind of a weird shape. So here's what we have so far. And for the voices, I'm going to crank that up to seven. I'm going to check un. I'm going to have the re-trigger unchecked for both of them, so it's it's not as a mechanical type sound. So you can see how the sound has some variation to it because in part B, I am going to uh, re-trigger one of the oscillators, so there's more of a consistent tone going on. But I don't want that consistency for the whole sound. So in an oscillator A1 for the volume, you can uh, turn down just a little bit. I'm going to turn that down to about 8.67 or 8.57 will work. And for the phase, I'm going to turn that to about 36 degrees, so just up a little. And the detune, we're going to add a lot of detune to this. We're going to go to 5. 5.38, so it'll be a good amount. And you can leave the stereo where it is. For the amp envelope, I'm just going to change this decay. I'm going to crank that up. Oh, and I need to add a little bit of release, so I'm going to take this up to around 3. And then let's turn the volume down of oscillator A2 to about 3, or maybe about 3.76, or I think that's the number they give. It's right around, uh, so right around 4. Just turn it down so it's not as prevalent. I'm going I'm to turn this detune in oscillator A2 up to about 2.57. You might be asking why I didn't just use... Uh, uh, eight voices of unison instead of um, seven, you know, instead of using a six and seven. It's because with the detune amount that I did apply, eight sounds like it's too much. So I might even dial this back to six after the sound gets more sculpted. All right, so there is oscillators uh, A1 and A2 out of the way. Oscillator B1, I'm going to turn into my, my wave, my white noise oscillator. I'm going to kind of make it, you know, generate that white noise sound. So the volume, I'm going to crank that down a good amount to probably about 1.5 or anywhere in there. So let's play this and hear what it sounds like. And I'm going to leave retrig on for that because I want it to retrigger every time I press a note. So it's more of a consistent uh, noise sound. And that's really all you have to do for that. And now for oscillator B2, I'm going to pitch this up to a positive. And then I need to uh, crank up the voices here. So I'm going to do eight for the noise, and I'm going to do five for this uh, 
oscillator B2. And in oscillator B2, it's just another saw wave. So we're stacking two saws in a triangle saw wave. And then we are going to obviously introduce that noise that we just created. Okay, so now to get the blending right, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit on oscillator B2. I'm going to turn it down to about 6.9 or around 7. I'm going to apply some detune to it. And if you want that kind of key sound in there, you can leave retrigger checked. But I guess I'll just turn this into just a fully epic kind of a super saw sound. So I'm gonna uncheck that retrig. So the only retrigger sound you're gonna you're gonna keep selected is on your oscillator B2, which is your noise. And then turn your decay up and your release up a little bit. Okay, so that squares away the oscillator. So now let's go to our filters. In our filter for part A, I'm going to select the low pass filter. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do the same thing for oscillator or for part B. But in part A, I'm going to keep the cutoff where it is at halfway. So it should be like 146 hertz or something like that. And now I'm going to turn the drive up just a little bit just to kind of boost some harmonics and things like that. So just to about 0.7 or 0.8 would work. All right, now moving on to part B. In part B, I am going to select for the uh, filter type, make sure it's on B, because we just want this to affect the noise. And for the cutoff, I'm going to open this up a little bit, because if I solo this oscillator, or this uh, page right now, I want a little bit more of that brightness to shine through because of this, the noise and that higher pitched voicing. So I'm going to take that up to about um, 300 and, let's see, about 400, 396, anywhere around there. So we'll do, we'll do around 415. boost a little bit of the drive as well on that. Okay, so that is pretty much the uh, oscillators and the filter setup. So now I'm going to go down to this uh, master filter control, and in that I am going to really boost the cutoff here. So I'm going to do pretty much up to about 21,341 hertz. So now let's go to this modulation envelope and further add some more control over our cutoff frequency. So I'm going to select cutoff A, B because I want to affect it both part A and part B. So it's doing uh, every waveform and the white noise. And now I'm going to turn this rotary knob up a good amount. I'm not going to crank it up all the way to 10 like I do with a lot of sounds. I'm just going to turn it up to about, oh, about 5, maybe 6, anywhere in there. All right, and then now I'm just going to affect the uh, decay and the sustain here. So the decay, I'm going to turn up to 3.22 or around there, if you can get close to it. And I'm going to add a little bit of sustain. And for the sustain value, I'm going to do about one point, I think it's like 25 or around there. All right, and now I'm going to go to my second modulation envelope, and I'm going to select the pitch A and B. And this is that little trick that I've showed you before, where if you just push this up a little bit, I'll go to about 3.4 or 4 around there. And then just crank your, or turn, slightly turn up your, your decay a little bit. All right, so that pretty much squares out the bulk of the sound except for the effects. So I'm going to go to my distortion module and add some distortion. The distortion type is going to be the fold back, and I really like that one for super saw sounds. And for the amount, I'm going to turn the amount down to 1.48. 
I'm gonna turn the dry wet down to 90. About 95, actually. All right, and now let's add some coarse, which will kind of help add a almost of a vibrato-ish type effect. And for the delay, you're gonna do 18. You're gonna do 18 milliseconds, or around there. Leave the rate at its default value of 0.61 hertz, and turn the depth down. I actually keep it at 40% like it is. And for the feedback, we're going to keep the feedback really low, so just to about 1.43%. 1, 1 and the width where it is, and then turn down the dry wet a good amount. This is just helping thicken things up. I'm going to turn it down to about 13%. And then I'm going to turn up this mix real quick. I want more of the highs coming through. All right, and so that's kind of what we have going on now. So for the EQ, let's select that, and we'll carve out some of the frequencies that we don't really want to need. So keep the bass and the break, the bass frequency pretty much where they are. You can boost the bass frequency a little bit, uh, just, just a hair. And the treble, I'm going to turn up to 8.71 dB. Turn down that cutoff and that drive a little bit. All right, and now let's add some delay just so it has some bounce to the sound. So for the delay left and the delay right, I'm going to do delay left, uh, eighth note. And for the delay right, I'm going to do a quarter note triplet. Turn your low cut up a little. And your high cut up as well. Keep ping pong selected. I'm going to turn the dry wet down a little just to taste. All right. So now that we got those squared away, um, I'm going to add just a hair of compression to it. And that is pretty much the sound. Uh, like I said, I have some third-party reverb going. And other than that, it doesn't need a whole lot of effects. It is a pretty huge saw sound. also work really well as a mono type sound. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't checked out SouthTutorials.com, head on over there. Tons of great things, South. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.